quadratics by factoring. You'll be able to solve quadratics over the set of real numbers by factoring. Now, for actually factoring, go back to the factoring unit. Here, we're going to do a quick review. Remember that factoring is the rewriting of an expression as the product of prime factors. The first step when factoring should always, this is one of those few times where always is definitely used, should always be to look for a greatest common factor. Remove it first or factor it out first. Then, if you have three terms, okay, three terms is a trinomial, so you're going to look at factoring a trinomial. We should have identified and removed the greatest common factor first. Identify, at least visually, your a, b, and c. Multiply a times c. List all the factors of the product a, c. This is kind of list all of them. At least think about the list. What you need to do is identify the factors of a, c that sum to b. So what you're looking for is you have a times c b. They have to multiply to a c and they have to add up to b. This is where you have your b1 and your b2. b1 b sub 1 times b sub 2 should equal a c b sub 1 plus b sub 2 should equal b. That's what you're looking for. Once you identify these terms, you can put them in the box like this, or you could factor by grouping ax squared plus b1x plus b2x plus c. So you could do it by the box, you could do it by, fact, by, group, uh, by the box, by grouping, either way. If you do it by the box, you want to remove the greatest common factor vertically, and then you want to remove the greatest common factor horizontally. Your factors up here and your factors here will be your final answer. Now, well, when I say final answer, you got to look at them again to see if the two terms are a difference of squares or a sum or a difference of cubes. A difference of squares is a pattern. a squared minus b squared is equal to a plus b times a minus b. You should be able to do things that involve expressions as well. For instance, 16 minus x plus 3 quantity squared. You have a perfect square in the 16, and you have a perfect square in the x plus 3 quantity squared. You square root both. Then you need to distribute the negative after you factor using the pattern, and then you combine your like terms. Now here, you, would, you could also say negative x plus 7, x minus 1. That's fine as well. The sum and difference of cubes, again, a pattern that you should recognize. This is the only new pattern for Algebra 1 or Algebra 2. Remember that you've got a perfect cube plus a perfect cube or a perfect cube minus a perfect cube. You have the acronym SOAP. Same, oops, see if I can move this guy. Here we go. Same, opposite, always positive. Same, opposite, always positive. That's how you get the signs or the operators. You have the cube root. You've got the cube roots. That's what goes first. Then you square, multiply, and square. When I say that, you square the first cube root, you multiply the cube roots, you square the second cube root. And that's it. Again, it's a pattern. Now, one thing about the difference of squares, if you have x squared plus 16, that's prime. You cannot factor a sum of squares unless it's got a um, common factor. Okay, if you want more examples of factoring, again, go to the factoring folder and watch whichever type of factoring you need. So, 
once you actually get things factored, remember that to solve, you have to have the equation equal to zero. So if I want to solve the equation, 6x equals zero, based on the zero product rule, I have six times something is equal to zero. Well, that something, either six is equal to zero or x equals zero, since six can't be, x is my only solution. I can check it algebraically. Yay, that works. And I can check it graphically. Woohoo! It works again. Notice that when x is 0, y is 0. I am looking for what is x when y equals 0. That's what it means to solve. So the zero product rule, if I have a bunch of things multiplied together and they equal 0, well then, one of them has to be zero. Example two, x times x plus five equals zero. Based on the zero product rule, either x or x plus five must equal zero. Therefore, I can set each factor to zero. Remember, factors are things we multiply together. So I have this times this. I set each one of those items equal to zero, and I solve. Well, the x equals zero is pretty easy x plus 5 equals 0, not much harder, x is equal to negative 5. Here I have two solutions. I can check them both algebraically and graphically. Algebraically, I substitute the 0 back in. 0 times 0 plus 5 equals 0, 0 times 5 is 0. That's true. The other one, negative 5 times the quantity negative 5 plus 5 equals 0. The negative 5, it's inside the parentheses, so I have to evaluate that first according to the order of operations. Negative 5 plus 5 is 0. 0 times negative 5 is 0. Again, true. They both work. If I graph this, okay, and you can graph it on your graphing calculator. Remember, you go to y equals, and then for y1, you can just put in x, x plus 5, press zoom, 6, and you'll get from negative 10 to positive 10. Now remember that I'm looking at where does the parabola cross the x-axis. That's my root, my zero, my solution. And in this case, it's crossing at negative 5 and at x equals 0. Remember, these are the roots, x-intercepts, zeros, solutions of the equation. Anytime I ask for any of these things, this is what I'm looking for. Okay, your turn, using the zero product rule. Pause the video and try these. You're back, great. This is three X equals zero, X minus two equals zero, X equals zero, X equals two. Those are my two solutions. Over here, I have 2x minus 3 is equal to 0, or x plus 2 is equal to 0. x equals, oops, equals negative 2 is easy here. This one, 2x is equal to 3. x is equal to 3 halves. These are the two places where this parabola crosses the x-axis. Finally, I have x plus 2 is equal to 0, x plus 3 is equal to 0. If this times that equals 0, either this is 0 or that's 0. For this to be 0, x must be negative 2. For that to be 0, x must be negative 3. My two solutions. Again, the zero product rule, factor, set every factor equal to 0 and solve for the variable. Solving quadratic functions using square roots. Similar, and also very easy. If I don't have the b term, I can just solve it using square roots. In this case, x squared is equal to 16. I take the square root. x is equal to plus or minus 4. Remember that when you introduce the radical, you must account for both the positive and the negative. 
when you've got fractions, do not immediately run to that calculator. Here we've got 4x squared is equal to 25. x squared is equal to 25 divided by 4. 25 divided by 4 is some decimal. I don't want that. It's much easier to do x is equal to the square, first off, plus or minus, the square root of 25 is 5, the square root of 4 is 2. I'm done. If you went and made this into a decimal, you just made it harder. Finally, over here I have x squared is equal to negative 49. This is going to be x is equal to plus or minus the square root of negative 49. In this case, at this point in time, you simply put down no real solutions. Once we do imaginary numbers, we'll find out how to get a solution, an imaginary solution. For right now, there's simply no real solutions. In summary, to solve a quadratic equation algebraically, you write it in the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. The equals zero is important. Got to get it to zero. Remove the greatest common factor. If there's only two terms, you're looking at a difference of squares or a sum or difference of cubes. If so, use the appropriate pattern. Instead, if it's three terms, you've got a trinomial. You need to follow the method to solve it either using the box or by grouping. Finally, once you have it factored, use the zero product rule to determine the zeros, roots, solutions, x-intercepts of the quadratic equation. To do that, you set each factor containing a variable equal to zero and solve for the variable. You can check your solutions by either A, substituting them into the original equation and checking for a true statement, or graphing the original equation and looking to see where the parabola crosses the x-axis. That's it.